Hello, welcome back. So from continue from where we left off. So what we can do at this stage now is to uh, cut out all these classes, database, model view, and controller classes, and save them individually in a different folder. Okay. So what we can do, cut that out from there. Go and create a new class, a new file. Choose P for your language, and put your by the way, you can put your PHP block there without the closing block because it's all going to be PHP code all in this page. You don't need to close it. Okay, so all that will run through all this page. Now, um, so what we want to do now is to create a, a new folder to house our framework. So we go ahead and create a new folder, all capital leaves is the folder name, and we want to save this as our database. So we're saving this. Uh, class names as the file names in the libs folder. Okay, so we've got our database class. So cut all that out from there. All we've got now is the database class only. So go file save us again and call this um, model. So replace that with a model class. All we've got now is only model class. Save that. File save us again and Call it okay. Now we've got the view class. All we've got left is to take care of is the controller class. Call that out from there. Save this and go file save us again. So in our libs folder, we've got database class, model class, view class. All that is left now is the controller class. Save that. By the time you replace it with controller, we've got all your classes saved. Now, that's in the PHP, uh, there's something called autoload function. What this does is to go to a designated folder and autoload all the class name in that file folder with the PHP extension. And underscore, underscore, autoload. Okay. That, and now all you have to do now is to specify. So use the require key and specify the folder where you want to require your files from. Folder name forward slash. Likewise, you want to append, attach uh, strings with a variable on a single line. Separate them with single quotes and dots. Single quotes for your strings. Dot PHP is a string, so wrap that up in a single quote. Now goes your variable right there. Okay, so at this stage now, let me also show you one thing you have to bear in mind. But before I do that, okay, right, I will. There's something also you need to bear in mind when you are creating your file extensions. But um, I will let that error happen before I can tell you why. Okay, so if we go ahead and save this page, um, it will still load no problem because that autoload function has automatically brought everything in the class for us. Okay, so our page is still loading. Now, in the event where, you see here, if you put a space between that single quote and the .php file extension, right, that will cause a problem. Because space is a character. Now, this autoload function will go to that list folder looking for a file name with space .php. And if you haven't got that, it will cause error. So let's see if that's the case. So by the time you refresh this page, obviously that's a problem. You can't find that file. So bear in mind, in case if you're tired and falling asleep, trying to code, and mistakenly put a space where you're not supposed to, it will cause a problem. Space is a character. Basically, that will cause a problem. So when you refresh this page, again, now you've behaved and um, supply that character accordingly, your page is loading fine, no problem. Right, so what do I show you next? Now let's create more pages. So because we have established our framework, all we can do now is to create more pages. So if we go to our root folder, and which we call YouTube, So to create more pages now, uh, simply go to your views folder and then create more folders. Each folder represents your page you want to create. OK. 
Okay, so let's create two more pages. Um, call this one index, and the last one, which I call that one tutorials. Okay, so we got our all these pages here now. So our folder names represent our pages. So inside those folders, they should house a file named index.php. Okay, so let's um, do that very quickly. So if you go ahead and save this file, go file savers. You want to save this in a index page. All right, so index. Now you can say index page coming soon. Okay, so you've got your index page. Now go back, save us again. You want to save this in a register page. Okay, so you can say register page coming soon. Now we want to do the same for tutorials page. Okay, so you got your tutorials page coming soon. So uh, we've got uh, four pages literally now. Now let's see how we can bring that in. So to bring that in, all we have to do here, we have to require it. Okay. Um, to do so, we can issue a count variable, right? Count equal, say count equal one. Now issue a, a sense of if statement, else, if, okay, so this is what we're trying to do. Say if count equal, for your, compar uh, for your comparable statements, use equal equal to mean equal to one. Okay, so we are basically saying if the count equal to one, load our login page. Else, if count equal to two, um, what shall we load? All right, so likewise, take all that, put it there. Okay, so you go if, else, we've got four pages, so we can do all that for all the pages. Okay, so now this is how we, uh, because all those pages, they haven't got models, so they don't need to call any meta from the model, so we don't need that there, just now. So change that number to four, change this number to three. This I'm trying to use this now to introduce to you um, bootstrapping, but um, let's, so we are saving our controller. In our controllers, we should save every controller as a file name, same as the class name, okay? File name, so we call this one index, likewise, we call this one index. So file name index, class name index, okay? And for this one, tutorials. Uh, so now we've got this count. And so if we, so all we have to do now is go to our controllers folder and then create controllers for the end to load the individual pages, you see? So if they have models, we'll do the same. Go to the models for that, create models for those pages and do the same. But now let's do with the controllers first. So all you have to do here is to file, save as controllers name as a file name. Okay, because they haven't got models to worry about, you don't need to implement, but you can load the, okay, so you don't need to implement that. So all our pages will now uh, do default page. So we save that. Folder name should be called the same. So folder name, register, class name, register. Okay, so, and everyone implement get the default page. So if we go back to our code now and call that, okay, for the register, say if count is equal to four, load our register page. When you refresh, count equal to four, we should expect to see our register page. Obviously, if there's any pass error, you know there's a mistake somewhere. And so that mistake happened to be in line four. You didn't put end of statement right there. So line 10. So when you save again, and that problem should be gone by now. So when you see your register page, 
coming soon. See? So this is how we can create our individual pages. So in the next video, I will introduce you to Bootstrap and how we can use our Bootstrap class to load our pages, create links and all that. Okay, thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye.